if you know how to do what I'm about to show you, no one can trick you into these hyper-dispensational and false gospels that are all over the place in this final generation of deception. Let me show you how to rightly divide the Bible. Now keep in mind, 2 Timothy 2.15 is the famous scripture they all love to twist and manipulate because it talks about rightly dividing the word of truth. It's not just about dividing dispensations. It's about dividing the Bible and the words of Jesus and the gospel message and dispensations and everything that's true and discernible in scripture. We have to rightly handle the word of God. And where do you think we start? We have to start with Jesus. He is the word. He is the truth. If we don't start with Jesus, when we build our rightly dividing technique by the grace of God, if we don't start with Jesus, we're going to get mixed up. We have to know how to handle Jesus and we need to know how to divide his words. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Rightly dividing ties into all these categories. It's not just about one particular thing, such as dispensations, which they're using 2 Timothy 2.15 strictly for dispensational teaching, which is wrong. They're teaching it wrong. But rightly dividing is about all these categories. It helps us understand the gospel itself and the entire Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, and everything that's in between. We can rightly divide if we learn how to start with Jesus. Here's the ministry of Jesus for three and a half years. First of all, we have to understand the words of Jesus himself. What he said falls into four categories. If you don't know these four categories, they're going to manipulate and mess with your head. They're going to tell you things that are so wrong. So what are these four categories that we need to know ourselves? Well, the words of Jesus can be divided into four categories. You have casual, which he's saying, go get me some fish. I'm hungry. Has nothing to do with the law of Moses. Has nothing to do with being born again. The, the kingdom of heaven has nothing to do with anything in the new covenant, blood covenant or anything. It's just casual. Then we have his words where he's speaking under the law of Moses. And there's times when Jesus tells people to keep the law of Moses, literally. So we have to know about those words. Where are they at? And then there's the last two is the new covenant words, which is most all of his teachings. I would say 75 to 85% of the words of Jesus fall into this category. They're not under the old law category. So this is important to divide the words of Jesus that he's speaking to us today from those that he was speaking to them under the law. And finally, the fourth category, which you can you can put in the third category if you want, but I just split them up because a lot of his words are prophetic for the future. So these are the categories. And if we don't know these categories, we're going to be lost because people are going to mix us up and uh, deceive us. We have to be able to read the words of Jesus and go, okay, that particular verse falls into one of these four categories. Which one is it? And is it for me today? Or is he speaking to somebody under the law? And another thing they try to fool you on is they try to tell you that Jesus is only talking to the Jews. And you have to understand something called the Jews first principle. It's a principle in the Bible where God has a process whereby he reveals truth and prophecies and communicates to the world. He always goes through Israel and the prophets. He always goes through the Jews first. Jesus was a Jew. And now God's speaking to the entire world through Jesus who was a Jew, and he had to go to the tribes of Israel first. So keep that in the back of your mind, that he didn't go to just the Jews, he went to the Jews first. And then Jesus said, go tell everybody around the world what I told you. He says that several times, go tell everybody what I told you. So it's not the Jews only, and they will try to manipulate you and tell you that the words of Jesus are only for the Jews, forgetting the Jews first principle. Let's continue. So we're interested right here about the new covenant. How do we divide the old covenant from the new covenant? And this is essential that you learn. If you don't learn how to do this, these deceivers are going to mess with your head. 
Okay, so I found four steps to dividing the old covenant from the new covenant. Four steps involved in dividing, right? Initiation stage, the duration stage, the finalization stage, and then the implementation stage, putting it into effect. All right, let's take a look at this. The initiation stage, when we divide the new covenant from the old covenant, it initiates, it begins at the baptism of Jesus. When the Holy Spirit comes down, he goes in the wilderness, fast for 40 days, comes out, he starts preaching the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, both. It's the same thing. Don't let him fool you. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven are the same thing. It begins at his baptism. The second step is how long does it last? How long does Jesus do this, this preaching of the kingdom of heaven and the parables and collecting his disciples and building his stones to lay the foundation for what will be the church of grace, right? So he's collecting his disciples, teaching them, preparing them, prepping them, getting them ready and training them, right? And teaching them. So that lasts for three and a half years. That's the second step. The third step is when he's finished. Now keep in mind, Jesus had to do two things before it was finished. He couldn't go to the cross and shed his blood. He couldn't do that until he was done teaching. His words are just as important as the blood sacrifice. Many people want the blood sacrifice, but they don't want the words. They tell you the words aren't for you. It's just for the Jews. Don't listen to Jesus. And they want the blood though. Hey, I'll take the blood. Wash me clean. I need that blood. But you can't have one without the other. We have to find out which words are under the new covenant that he spoke to me. And then the blood also comes with that. So there's two things. Then when he got done teaching, he went to the cross and was beaten and died. And he, as he was dying, everything was finished. What was finished? Well, not just the blood sacrifice, but the teachings, the doctrines, the words. So keep that in mind. So when he got done for the three and a half years, it was finished. When he died at the cross, everything was accomplished. The fourth step of dividing the old covenant from the new covenant you would think this is where it, it starts right here, but actually it doesn't. The work that was involved was finished, but now we got to implement it. We got to put it into action. That doesn't actually take place until the Pentecost, 50 days later. Jesus walked with them for 40 days and he continued to remind them and teach them and strengthen them. And af after that, he told them to go wait in the upper room and 10 days later, the, the Holy Ghost came down and they began the church. Now at Pentecost, both Jews and Gentiles were added to the church. There was 120 in the upper room. 120 were speaking in tongues. 120, Paul, Peter stands up, talks about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, talks about the Son of God, and they are saved because they believe. 3,000, that includes the proselytes. Proselytes were there. Gentiles. So the church is both Jews and Gentiles. It started with Jesus's 12 disciples. It's built upon the foundation of the 12 apostles. You can see that in Revelation chapter 21, when you see what the city looks like, all the names of the apostles are the foundation of the walls. So we start with the Jews. We start with the cornerstone of Jesus. We start with his baptism. We continue for three and a half years. It's all finished at the cross. And then it's implemented with the Holy Spirit of power. And it's taken to all the nations, including the Gentiles at Pentecost. It begins to go around the whole world. So the implementation is where it really, the church begins, the bride begins, the body of Christ begins right there with that moment. That's the truth. Now they're gonna tell you all kinds of lies, but that's the actual truth. So what do we have? Let's take a look at this. We've got all four steps, initiation, duration, finalization, and implementation to rightly divide the words of Jesus, to rightly divide the old covenant from the new covenant, to rightly divide the gospel. Where did it begin? Where did it go into action? And you know, where did it start? Where did it build? And how did it all change from the law of Moses to the church age? And these are the four steps. These are the four points. If you understand this and you don't let them fool you and you keep this in your heart, no one can deceive you about these things. Rightly dividing the words of Jesus, rightly dividing the Old Testament from the New Testament, 
understanding how the gospel of grace comes to us through the words of Jesus, how it all developed, how it began and developed and sprang forth. You understand all those things and you can rightly divide. All right, hold on to this. In the name of Jesus, I love you guys. We'll see you in the next video. I hope this helps. Peace.